But, you know, it's always um, a re an honor for me and a privilege for, for us all to, um, especially for me here, because I've been known, I've known Helen and Pastor Henry and Pastor Helen for a long, really long time. But I'm very excited about what she's going to bring today because even if it's different every time, and but the, the gift that's on her life and the teaching gift and the love she has for us all, you know, it just exudes, it just comes out in, in for everything you say. Okay, we love you so much. Okay, give her a big clack offering. Thank you, Helen. Well, you may be seated. Thank you. If we can get those little bright lights turned down, that would be amazing. I want to see everybody's face. Um, it's great um, to have fam to be with family. It's yeah. always amazing. Um, that was wonderful, uh, Paul. Thank you for sharing about your family and and the things that you've put in place and. Um, yeah, we bless you guys, and we, we love having you as part of our family. And same with Tony and Barbie. We love that you guys um, would choose to keep coming back to the far north. Um, and so, yeah, we just really appreciate you. I appreciate everybody that's here, everyone that's part of our Rock Church family. I really appreciate and value you so much, and that that is coming genuinely from my heart. You know, it's, um, it's amazing to be, part, be a part of a family. And um, yeah, so I think you should all give yourselves a big clap. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Hey, Ian, is it okay to get those lights down those, and the house lights up? Someone, sorry, fiddling with the lights. Just that though, I just can't see. <laughs> sorry. One day we will have just a push button and everything will happen. Amen. <laughs> hey, um, I just want to just um, say something uh, that Sabina mentioned about. We had a, we had a, team, a team night uh, during the week. And so thank you for everyone who was able to make that team night. We had, we had fun, right? Did we have fun? It was good. Um, hey, where's our little lamb? Where's our little lamb? Lena, our little lamb. <laughs> It's an inside joke, but she was confused, thinking she was a horse, but she was actually a lamb. <laughs> you were lost, but you were found. Amen. It was good. Um, I just want to say, when Pastor B Sabina said about my vision, I just want to say that it's our vision, Henry and I. He, um, that's okay. He, he might be off doing some things during the week and changing uh, a little bit bit of his, uh, what he does and who he ministers to, um, but we're, it's very much, you know, together and, um, and, but it's our vision, you know, I didn't sort of lay out a three-point plan or a five-point plan, I just talked about, I just shared about the sort of church that we want to be, amen, and that's a welcoming family of people and so, yeah, and we've always, that's always been our heart and our DNA really is to, to be like a family. So, yeah, thank you all for, you know, being part of the journey. Amen? Amen? All right, so this morning, I thought it was amazing because I just kept hearing, even from the time that we were together in the prayer meeting, I kept hearing about hope. And that's why I want to share with you this morning about hope. And um, if there's anything that this world needs is hope. Amen. You know, um, we could look at all of the negative things happening in the world and, you know, and just the positions that people find themselves in and countries like I think of the, you know, the Ukraine and what they're experiencing. You know, I think they just had a flood as well. Like it's like, oh, Lord, you know, those, I think of those families and those children and those elderly people and, and it's like, Wow, we really need hope. Um, and so this morning, yeah, I want to share. Um, so thank you. Let's just agree together in prayer, hey? So thank you, Lord. I thank you, Trinity, that, that you, your desire is that we would be people who have hope. That we would be people who recognize the hope that we have in Jesus Christ. And so I thank you this morning for our time together. I thank you, Father, that you would reveal hope to us this morning. 
Lord, if there's people here that need hope, I pray that they would discover hope this morning and that hope is living on the inside of them. And I thank you, Holy Spirit. You're the one who guides us into all truth. And it's not just a truth that we agree with in our minds, but it's a truth that transforms our inner, inner lives and it flows out. And so I pray that this morning, Father, we would have those ears that hear what you want to speak to us as individuals sitting here in this place. I thank you that there is not one that you don't know. There is not one person in this place that you don't desire to bring hope to and to speak hope over. Whatever our circumstances and our situations, what even what might be just around the corner, I thank you, Father, that you are our very present hope. And this morning we want to actually experience and encounter hope afresh. And we thank you, Father, that we will do that this morning. We have an expectation that you will speak to us, that you will cause hope to rise up on the inside of us. And even those circumstances that seem hopeless, I pray this morning that Holy Spirit, you are filling that space of hopelessness, filling with hope in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So in Romans 15, and I've shared some of this before, but I couldn't get away from, from this in, in preparing what I wanted to, to you know, what I, want, what I felt the Lord wanted to share this morning. Um, so in Romans 15, verse 4, it says that for everything that was written in the past was written to teach us, so that through the endurance taught in the scriptures, and the encouragement they provide, we might have hope. In the scriptures, we can discover encouragement that speaks into our situation, our lives, and especially our hearts. If I, if I were to ask you this morning, how many could say, yes, I've read the scriptures, and they have many times spoken directly to my life. Who, who's experienced that? Lift your hand up. If you've, if you've read the scriptures and they've ministered to your life, amen, I'm sure we all could. In the scriptures, if we have eyes to see and ears to hear, we can discover encouragement. And that encouragement releases a sense of hope within us. So in the scriptures, we can, if we have eyes to see and ears to hear, we can discover this encouragement. And that encouragement actually releases a sense of hope within us and it can shift us and it can transform our perspective. All of you who raised your hand before, I know that that's what you've experienced. You've, exper you've encountered encouragement in the scriptures. And that encouragement has released something on the inside of you and it has shifted you. And it has transformed you, amen? That's the power of the word of God, the scriptures, the power of the living word, which is Jesus who dwells within us and the Holy Spirit and the Father who is endorsing it all. Amen? Amen. So um, we also discover in the scriptures this call to perseverance. I think that when I, in my, in my life, in my experience, in my own life and maybe in the lives of people that I've met, like hope can be fleeting. You know what I mean? Like we have hope and then something happens and that hope seems to escape us. But the scriptures encourage us towards perseverance. This call to persevere. That in due, in due time, in, in, a, in a season, that we will reap if we don't faint. So there is this call to perseverance. You know, there's this saying, it's not in the Bible, I don't think, <laughs> but there's this saying that, say, that says good things come to those who wait. Remember that old saying? 
not to those who hesitate. <laughs> but listen, hesitation is fine. It's part of being human being. We hesitate. We have doubts. We're uncertain. Sometimes we persevere and then we, you know, we sort of pull back. And, but you know what? The good thing is that we're on a journey and we're, we're going somewhere. But, you know, when we remain hopeful, it produces resilience. It produces this resilience on the inside of us. When we are hopeful, we are resilient. And that resilience actually gives us this posture of hopeful living. Anyone, when you've been, you know, like you've lost your hope, you like feel really discouraged, it actually affects your posture. It, it, it actually affects the way that you carry yourself physically and you can feel it in your body. But, you know, resilience that comes from being hopeful actually gives us this posture of hopeful living. It actually is about living open-hearted. You know what? When we live open-hearted, anything can happen. Yeah. Amen? And what hope means is that in adversity, and we all face adversity, some of that adversity comes from, you know, out of the blue. It can be a sickness in our body or, you know, it can be we lose our jobs or whatever it might be, something unexpected. But some of that adversity comes from our own decision-making in our lives, right? That's real, okay? That's real. But um, in adversity, we can know that we are connected and anchored to something solid. Because that fleeting hope, you know, that hope that the world has, you know, I hope so. I hope that happens. I hope I win lotto. I hope so. <laughs> you know, it's fleeting, right? But this hope that we have as followers of Jesus is solid. We are anchored. We are anchored. And um, our hope, but our hope, your hope this morning, my hope, it's not anchored um, to wishful thinking. It's not even ha ha anchored to our faith declarations. Can I say that? Our hope is not anchored to our faith declarations, even though those things are important and they're good because they form us. But our hope is anchored to Jesus Christ. Amen. Um, it's anchored in Christ. Um, and Jesus is still in the boat, folks. He's still in the boat. Jesus is still in your boat. And, um, and more often, rather than calming, calming the storms that are around us, he's actually speaking peace to the storm within us. Okay? That's what Jesus does. He speaks peace to the storm that is raging within us. In 1 Peter 1, uh, verse 3, Ian's going to bring that up. But it says, Praise, praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. So our hope is... Our hope is not this fleeting hope that it all works out, but our hope is alive and is living. Yeah. Our hope is a person, and that person is Jesus. And this hope that we have in Christ is not stagnant, and it's not stuck. It is not stuck in past situations. It is not stuck with your 10-year-old self. My 10-year-old self, it's not stuck there. It's not stuck. Your hope is not stuck in your past circumstances that didn't go the way that you hoped they would. It's not stuck there. Okay? It's not even found in a future outcome, all right, hoping for something good to happen in the future. Your hope is not found there. Your hope is is living and it's present and it's right here and it's right now. Amen. I think we should give the Lord a hand for that. 
Because when we spend our time thinking about past regrets, okay, or the future concerns about what's going to happen in the world and in my world, we often miss the present because we're too busy future tripping or living in the past, the glory days of the past. No, our hope is found right now in today, amen. It's good news. It's good news. It's life. Amen? Because it means like we've never stuffed up so badly that we don't have hope. And it's like we don't have to become this certain person before we can have hope. Hope's right here. That's good news. Amen? That's good news. Hope is always found in the present. God is the eternal now. All right? It's not all about what happens when we die and go to heaven in the glory by and by, God is the eternal now. Amen. 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 Today, the scriptures say, today is the day of salvation. And that word salvation, we often think about it in terms of I'm saved going to heaven, I'm not going elsewhere. But salvation, that word, that English word salvation, it misses so much of what that word means. It means wholeness. It means healing. It means abundance. It means life. So today is the day of salvation. It's good news. Amen. Right now, right now has always been the time for God. Right now is God's right timing, right now, right today. Amen. Psalm 130 verse 5. It says, I wait for the Lord. I wait for the Lord. Sometimes we need to just slow down. I wait for the Lord. This is the amazing thing about the scriptures. We can just read them so quickly and without any reverence. But when we slow down, Come on, you don't have, it's not about reading lots and lots and lots of the Bible. It's about taking these words, meditating on them. I wait. Make it personal. I wait. I wait. I wait for the Lord. I wait for the Lord. He's here. I wait for him. I wait for you, Lord. My whole being waits. That's talking about our whole selves, not just our soul, our spirit, but our body, our whole being waits for the Lord. And in his word, I put my trust. In his word, Jesus Christ, the living word, I put my hope. That's where I'm placing my hope. I'm not placing my hope in my circumstances. I'm not placing it on a good outcome. I'm not placing it in my declaration. I am placing my hope in the living word, Jesus Christ. Amen. Lamentations 3, 21 to 23, it says, But this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. See, this requires participation on our part. I call it remembering well. I spoke about remembering well a few times ago. And this is that participation. So I call this to mind. It means that I, I remember and I reflect on, the God, on God's goodness. I, refl- I call it to my memory in case I've forgotten. In case the storm that's raging is causing me to forget, I bring this to mind. I call this to mind and therefore I have hope. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. And, you know, I was thinking about this and I heard someone say, everybody knows Bono, Bono, the YouTube guy. Um, He was going to be a preacher. A lot of his, if you listen to a lot of their songs, God, God, God's all there, right? He was going to be a preacher. A preacher and someone said to him why don't you be a preacher you know like and he said preachers are great you know it's great to preach but often you know, people agree and say yeah that was awesome and then you know within a day or so they've forgotten but when you write a song it gets on the inside of you 
And when I was reading the scripture, I was reminded of that, reminded of that old song. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. Who knows that song? It's an old hymn. Can we sing it? Why don't we stand? Come on, we can do things a bit differently. Engage your body. Who knows that that's a singer? Because I'm not. <laughs> do you know that one? The Amen. You're all awesome. And you know what? Maybe we need to, you know, create something. Maybe you need to do something in a practical sense to help remind you of that. So, you know, like when you get up in the morning, you open the curtains. You know, like it's like a new day's here. There's new mercy for me today. God's faithful. He's done it. He'll do it again, won't he? Amen. So, like, create these little habits in your day. Make a cup of coffee. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Great is your faithfulness. You've got new mercy for me today. That's why I love being able to see the sunrise. I love that. There's something powerful that speaks to me about the new mercy of God. I hear the birds singing just before the, the, you know, the dawn breaks. And you hear those birds singing. And it's like, Thank you, Lord. It's a new day. It's a new day. I can hit the reset button. Amen. And Isaiah 40, 31. It says, and we all know this one too. It says, but those who wait for the Lord. I've got it in the Amplified here because it just brings it out. For those who wait for the Lord, who expect, look for and hope in him will gain new strength and renew their power. They will lift up their wings and rise up close to God like eagles rising towards the sun, and they will run and not become weary, and they will walk and not grow tired. Amen. Acts 2:26. It says, "Therefore, my heart was glad." Come on. If you if you're struggling with stuff, speak the scripture and just like Believe what it's saying. Allow it to minister to you. Therefore, my heart was glad and my tongue rejoiced and my body will also live in hope. This is like an all-rounder, okay? Heart, tongue, body, all hopeful. Amen? The message, the message Bible translation of this says, I have pitched my tent in the land of hope. Don't you love that? Eugene Peterson, mate, he was the bomb. Anyway, it says, I have pitched my tent in the land of hope. And I love this idea of pitching my tent for all the campers out there like Binny and other people. (laughs) Pitch my tent. (laughs) Like Arthur's aren't so great at it. Truly, my hope's not tied to the past when we... I won't go there. I just won't bring up our camping trip. <laughs> okay. And I know that Diane and Gary are deadly campers. So, like, you, what, are you, what you want to do if you want to have a good camping experience is that you go with people who know what they're doing. You don't go with people who are in a rush to just hurry up and get in the car. Because <laughs> that never works out well. I'm just saying. <laughs> okay. I've pitched my tent in the land of hope. And uh, it reminds me of Isaiah 54. And it says, enlarge the place of your tent. Get a bigger tent. Stretch your tent curtains wide. Do not hold back. Lengthen your cords. Strengthen your stakes. Now I'm trying to sound like Mark, Pastor Mark. Yes. Enlarge your tent. 
Stretch your curtains wide. Do not hold back. Lengthen your cords. Strengthen your stakes. <laughs> Sorry, for those of you who don't know, Pastor Mark is a friend of ours from Sydney and he was the senior pastor of at least three people here, yeah. <laughs> and other people know him, but that was good. That was a good impression, right? You have to tell him about that, okay? And it says, For you will spread out to the right and to the left, and your descendants will dispossess nations and settle in their desolate cities. Now, we we are reading scripture, as we know, in Rock School of Sonship. We are reading scripture through the lens of the risen Christ. So we are not about dispossessing nations, okay? We, but when you look at that, strengthening the stakes, lengthening the cords, extend and make room, this idea of spreading out to the right and left expansion, overcoming those enemies like discouragement and despair who have set up camp in our lives, like overcoming those things, flourishing in places, even in places were one, that were once desolate and without life, those places of despair and, and discouragement in our life, you know, where they had set up camp. But we're actually kicking them out and we're pitching our tent, I love it, in the land of hope. And, you know, without a sense of hope, our outlook on the present, I want to... <laughs> that's called wishful thinking. Nah. <laughs> nah, that looks good. Looks like a circus tent. <laughs> now, I'm sure there's a glamping tent that we could find and put up there, Ian. <laughs> no. Okay, getting back to it. Without, this is really important. See, without a sense of hope... Without a sense of hope, our outlook on the present and the future is very restricted. We, we can't see. We can't see. It's very restricted. But hope is living present with us, within us. And when we discover hope, we actually expand. Hopeful people are big people. And, you know, hope is a glimpse <laughs> spiritually speaking. Okay, when we, when we discover hope, look out, when we discover hope, we get bigger. <laughs> that it's true. <laughs> oh, this is, this is, this is. <laughs> okay, hope is a glimpse of God at work. So when we see, just someone, ushers, ushers. <laughs> Can we remove that person from the front row? I need support for my hope. <laughs> okay. Right. There's a lot of commentary going on here. It's good. I love it. I love it. You can come to church and be happy and be family. It's what it sounds like around the dinner table, amen? I love it. Okay. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Woo! That is the tent. I pitched my tent. That tent and the land of hope. Amen. <laughs> yeah, that's our tent. Okay. All right. Because you know what? When we're hope filled, when we're hope filled, being hopeful, being a hopeful person actually makes room being hopeful creates space and it creates miracle space and anything can happen when we're hopeful and we're expanding we pitched our tent in the land of hope and we're we're lengthening our cords we're driving those stakes in we're actually making room for expansion amen and we're creating a miracle space romans 12 12 it says do not forget like, don't forget to rejoice, for hope is always just around the corner. Hold up, persevere through the hard times that are coming, that are here, and devote yourselves to prayer. Don't forget, like, in, when that was written, they actually suffered enormous persecution as Christians. 
the temple was destroyed and there's Christians that were being persecuted, they actually thought that Jesus was coming back in their lifetime. Okay? But it's the principles in this are still are, are here for us. This is the word, the word of God that we can draw so much encouragement for. So don't forget to rejoice. Like we were rejoicing this morning in the worship. We were rejoicing. I always said to Henry, it's so funny that I remember years ago when we were um, with supporting Pastor Polonga in the Sam, like it was the Samoan church, and there was a lot of Samoan people there. I remember this song. We were singing this song, "Shout to the Lord," and one of the guys, Normie, he said, "Why? Why do we need to shout at God for?" <laughs> I'm like, okay, that's not quite the point. We're not shouting at God. We're just shouting with you. We're rejoicing, amen? Yeah. So hope keeps our lives open to grace and to a future that's created by God rather than ourselves. Like we can create our own future. Like if we are a negative Nelly, we'll create our own future. But we want to be people who keep our lives open to grace and partner with God. Amen? Don't be a negative, Nelly. Let's be like Mary, who gathered up hope and carried it within her like a treasure. Oh, my goodness, to be Mary. Did she realize? You know, this? when you think about this, Mary, this... 13-year-old woman, teenage girl, a virgin, like a teenage girl carrying living hope, like living hope that thousands of years later would minister to people. And she carried that living hope within her like a treasure. I want to encourage us. We carry that same living hope within us. Let's treasure that. Let's treasure what we have on the inside of us. Amen? Amen. Hope in the person of Jesus Christ. It offers us this experience of trust that God's presence, his love and mercy, we sang about it today, is in us and all around us. And regardless of our circumstances, regardless of the future outcome. And everywhere that Jesus went, like Mary, who had that little lamb. <laughs> Everywhere that Jesus went, he turned the broken, the outcast, the discarded towards a new possibility. He asked that cripple, do you want to be healed? It was an invitation to step in. And he turned the sadness of the world towards joy and he introduced a new way of living where the dead are raised the lost are found, and the displaced people are brought home again. Amen? Amen? So hope is the patient and trustful willingness to live without full closure. Sometimes we haven't got closure on stuff and it, we just cannot get past it. Like we just struggle. But this hope that we have on the inside of us creates this grace that we can live without the full closure of those things. Like sometimes we just got to let go. If, I, if there's one thing I could say to you today about stuff that's happened in your past and maybe it's crippled you your whole life, I want to ask you and challenge you this morning, do you want to be healed? Because healing happens when you just begin to let go of that and discover hope that can cause you to live again. Amen. Yeah. Look, I've got a lot of other things, but I think that I think that this morning, you know, I think that will do us. But one thing I do want to say is sometimes when we think of hope, we just think that hope is just happy. Like hope is just happy, being happy, presenting our best self, willing ourselves to be optimistic. But I want to I want to say to us this morning that real hope is honest always honest and it's always authentic and you might just need to cry out to the living God I cannot do this on my own I need you to open my fist of those things that I can't let go of and then you lean into that grace because it's there hope isn't magic 
but exposing the despair. See, what happens when people lose their hope? They, they, they fall into this state of being in despair, right? But exposing the despair to the light always allows hope to get in. Hope leads us through the dark. And that, that's why the journey of discovering hope leads me and it leads you to Jesus. This is what Jesus does. He brings life and he conquers death and he sets the oppressed free and he liberates the captives and he gives sight to the blind. This is authentic hope. And if I could have those who are distributing communion, sorry, I forgot to say that. Ephesians 1.17 says, I desire that you will draw directly from the source. source. And we ourselves are not the source of hope. We Thank you. We don't manufacture it. The source dwells within us and actually flows to us with abundance. And our responsibility as followers of Jesus is to develop this consciousness, this face-to-face connection to the source, to this wellspring. And uh, in John 7, 37 and 38, it says, If anyone is thirsty, let him come and stand face to face with me and drink. In your realizing that I am what the scriptures are all about, you will discover uniquely for yourselves, face to face with me, that you are what I am all about and rivers of living water will gush out of your innermost being. See, when we know that we are standing face to face with Jesus, when we stand face to face with Jesus and he looks at us and we look at him and in in his face we see a reflection of us and in our face he sees himself. It's about identity. Hope is tied to our identity. And when we realize this, it says rivers of living water will gush out of your innermost being. So why don't you stand with me this morning? I want you to recognize and realize this morning that you are standing in this place, but you are standing face to face with Jesus. And he wants you to look into his eyes this morning. And he wants you to discover who you are. You are not without hope this morning. You are not stuck in something that you think can never change. You are not stuck there. There is a way out and a way through. Sometimes you might just need to cry out, I can't do this by myself. There is no shame in reaching out to others and getting the help that you need to get through stuff. There is no shame in that. And when we expose that to the light, we can heal. Anything that's hidden in darkness just overcomes us, overtakes us. It grabs a hold of our life. It's like addiction when it's in secret. It overtakes our lives. I want to say to you this morning, there is no shame. There is no shame in addiction. We just need to cry out, I need help. I need help. I need a, I need a way forward. I need hope. Yeah, thank you, Lord. So, Jesus Christ, our living hope. So be hope-filled this morning. And I'm just going to pray this, and I just want to invite you to take these emblems, these face-to-face, this what represents in this cup and this biscuit, this Jesus who's within you, your living hope. I want you to receive that this morning. I'm just going to pray. May the God of hope, Fill you with joy and peace in your faith that by the power of the Holy Spirit, your whole life and your outlook may be radiant with hope. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let's take these together.
And I think we're just for three more minutes. We're just gonna. I'm just gonna invite Lexi just to come and just play. You don't have to sing. Just play something. Yeah, thank you, Lord. Let's just, I feel like the Holy Spirit just wants to, he's already, Holy Spirit's already ministering. But I want to speak directly to your life this morning. If you're struggling, if you feel like you've given up or you've lost hope in something, some area, Maybe it's just in general. Life is just the mundane. You know, do the same. You try and put on a good front. But if you're honest, you you can recognize that I need help. And I love that song that the team was singing this morning, you know, from the moment that I wake up. Until I lay my head down, I will sing of the goodness of God. That is right there is healing to our lives. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Let's just raise our hands. This is a sign of surrender. Lexi, if you could just sing that. Just receive it. Just allow that hope to refresh you this morning. Amen. I know that people's lives, things are going to shift. Perspectives are going to shift. You're going to start to confront some stuff. You're going to have fresh hope. Something in you is going to, like that living water is going to bubble up this morning. You're going to see something. And you're going to see clearly. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me. In all my days, I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up until I laid my head. Of the goodness of God. All my life you have been faithful. Yes, He has. All my life you have been so. Your voice, you have led me through the fire in darkest nights. You were close like no other. I know you as a father, I know you as a friend, and I have lived in the goodness.
See you next week. Sabina, Pastor Sabina is sharing next week. Love to see you all. Amen.